Okay, so this time we are going to talk about lenses and different types of lens. Then also the image or ray diagramming that we use for lenses. And we can also locate the image using calculation or using a formula or the lens formula. Okay, so let's start. Lenses are curved pieces of glass or plastic which can bend light rays as light rays pass through it. We have two types of lenses. We have convex lens and concave lens. So I'll show you an illustration. So we have here, on your left, you have here a convex lens. So you can see here that it's thicker at the middle. And then you have here a concave lens, which are thicker on the edges. So when we say convex lens, they are considered to be converging lens. So that means if you have light rays coming through this point, they will converge at a particular point, here at the focal point. But for diverging lens or for concave lenses, if you have here light rays, they will diverge. Okay, so you can see here they will be at different directions unlike in converging lenses wherein the light rays are converged on this part. Now, if you can remember a, a particular experiment in elementary, you have a magnifying lens and then you try to burn a paper or a leaf using a magnifying lens because you try to concentrate the light rays coming from the sun at a particular point, which at that point you can burn the leaf or the paper if you can remember that experiment. So that is an example of a converging lens because the light rays converges. So convex lens are converging lens or convex lens or converging lens, they are thicker at the middle than at the edge. But for concave lens or diverging lens, they are thicker at the edge than at the middle. So you have here the anatomy of a convex mirror. You have two sides, you have here the vertical axis and then here the focus. Then the focal length is from the mid bin point to the focus and then you have twice the focal length and then this one is the principal axis okay so if you have here let's say a convex lens if you have the object here and the image is found on the other side of the lens so that will produce a real image but if the image is located at the same side as where the object is located so that is a virtual image. So let's take a look at ray diagramming for this. For example, we have here the object. Okay, let's use an arrow. And then the first ray will be drawn as this one. It's parallel to the principal axis. So you can see here ray 1. And then it passes through the focus on the other side. And then the next ray would be this, the violet one coming from one end of the arrow or one end of the object, passing through the midpoint. You have a straight line there. And then at this intersection is where the image is located. So you can see here, if the object is beyond 2F, the image is inverted. It is also smaller than the object. And it's also a real image. And that image is located between F and 2F. So again, ray 1 is an incident ray coming from the object parallel to the principal axis and then it's refracted through the focus. Ray 2 is an incident ray passing through the center and it's not refracted. So there is the red lamp. And then the intersection is where the image is located. Let's take a look at these examples. We have object 1. So there. And then that's how you draw it. So the image is located between F and 2F. And let's have another one. What if the object is at 2F? So let's draw the first ray. And then let's draw the second ray. The image is also inverted. And this time it's located at point 2F. Then another one. If you have an object between 2F and F. So first line again, the red one. It's parallel to the principal axis and then passing through F. And then the next line is passing through the center, and it's not refracted. 
Then you have here an enlarged image. So you can see that the image is larger than the object and is located beyond 2F. one, if you have an object at located at F, no image will be formed. Okay, so those are the images formed using convex lens. Okay, there you can see that there's no intersection point, so no image is. Okay, so let's now have the image formation by convex lens. So, for example, you have here the object, the red one, and then you have the blue, the image. So, this is how you do the ray diagram. We have the first one, again, it's parallel to the principal axis that is passing through focal length F, but this time it is extended. So, next, we have here a point parallel to or a point passing through the center and then again it's extended so this time the intersection is located at the same side as the object and you can see here that the image is larger than the object so the image is magnified so that happens if you have the magnifying lens and then you place it near the object the object will be magnified unlike if it's placed um, farther from the object what you, go, what you can see would be an inverted image, which is a real image. But in this illustration, we have here a virtual image, a magnified image. Okay, next. Now, let's have concave lens. For example, the object is located between 2F and F. How do you draw the ray diagram for this? We have the line parallel to the principal axis, but it will be diverged. So, you can see here. It's pointing upwards because uh, it's refracted, but it is a diverging lens. And then that one, you have to extend that through F. So make sure that that diverge arrow, which if you extend it, will pass through F on the same side as the object. Okay, next would be a line passing through the center. And then that intersection, you can see it's where the image is located. So you can see here, that you have the object and then the image form is a virtual image and it's smaller than the object. It's located between the center and the focal point. So here are other image formations using concave lens. So you can see here again, the ray diagram, okay, parallel, then it's diverged. But make sure that the extension is passing through the F on the same side as the object. And then another line passing through the center. Okay? So you can observe now that for concave lens, the image formed is always smaller than the object. And it's always a virtual image. That is for concave or diverging lens. Okay? So that is always the case for concave lenses. Now, in mirrors, we also have a formula so that we can also calculate where the image will be located. In lenses, we will also have this formula. We have 1 over the focal length equals 1 over the distance of the image plus 1 over the distance of the object. We also have here the size of the object over size of the image equals the distance of the object over the distance of the image. Okay? And then another formula would be the magnification. We also have size of the image or size of the object. That's also the height of the image or height of the object. Equals negative distance of the image over the distance of the object. Okay, so we follow sign conventions for lenses. We have for convex lens or converging lens, the focal length is always positive. The distance of the object is positive. And then the distance of the image is positive if it's located on the other side. It's negative if it's located on the same side as where the object is located. For concave, our focal length is negative. For the distance of the object, we have here, for the distance of the object, we have positive for concave. And then for the distance of the image, it's also always negative. Because the image form for concave lens is always a virtual image. So it's always on the same side as where the object is located. The size of the image, if it's negative, the image is inverted. That means it's a real image. For the size of the image, if it's positive, that means it's a prime. So it's a virtual image. Okay, so let's try to solve this.
An object is placed 75 centimeters from a thin converging lens, whose focal length is 50 centimeters. So that's converging or convex, so we have positive 50 for the focal length. Where will the image be located? Where will the image be located if the object is placed 25 centimeters from the lens? So we have here, you have to be consistent with the units, so all the measurements here are in centimeters, therefore we can now proceed. So let's solve. Okay, for part A, we are looking for the distance of the image. So from the formula 1 over f equals 1 over di plus 1 over do, we can now derive 1 over di is equal to 1 over f minus 1 over the distance of the object. So let's look for 1 over di. Focal length is 50 centimeters minus the distance of the object, it's 75 centimeters. So 1 over di, 1 over 50 minus 1 over 75, you will have an answer of 0 0.00667. Now if you're using calculator, use the whole uh all the decimal places to get the reciprocal so that's one over that answer you will get the distance of the image and that is equivalent to 150 so that's positive 150 centimeters since this is positive that means it's located on the other side so this one is a real image for part b let's have part b Same question, we are also looking for the distance of the image, but we have different given. So that's 1 over di is equivalent to 1 over 50 minus the distance of the object is 25 centimeters. So we'll use 25. So our 1 over di is 1 over 50 minus 1 over 25 is equivalent to 0. 0, 2, but this time it's negative. So getting the reciprocal of that, the distance of the image is equivalent to negative 50 centimeters. So based on the sign negative, based on this one, that means the image is located on the same side as the object and that makes it a virtual image. So that's for number one. Okay, let's now have the next item. For the next item, we have a converging lens has a focal length of 20 centimeters. Find the image location for an object at each of the following distances. So object placed at 50 centimeters. And when object is placed at 15 centimeters, calculate the magnification of the lens. So we are to solve for M also. It's a converging lens. So again, it's a convex lens. So the focal length is still positive. So let's solve. Okay, let's solve for A. 1 over DI plus 1 over F minus 1 over distance of the object. 1 over di is equivalent to 1 over 20 minus 1 over 50. So 1 over di is equivalent to 0 0.03. So distance of the image is 33.33 centimeters. So that's the distance of the image. And then we are to look for the magnification also, M. 
we can use the negative di over do. So that will give us negative 33.33. .33. Divided by the distance of the object is 50. So the answer here is negative 0 0.667. So you can see here it's negative. It's an inverted image. So if it's inverted and it's all, the distance of the image is also positive, it's a real image. So that is, but it's less than 1, so that means the image is smaller than the object. Okay, next. Okay, for letter B, okay, for letter B, again, we are looking for the distance of the image, 1 over di, our 1 over f is 20, but this time the distance is 15 centimeters. So that will give us 1 over di equals negative 0 0.0167 centimeters. Okay, so our di, that's 1 over centimeter. Our distance of image is equivalent to negative 60 centimeters. So looking at this, we have negative that means it's on the same side as the object. It's a virtual image. And then also we can solve for M. It's negative di over do. So that's negative, but we have a negative 60. Divided by the distance of the object, it's 15 centimeters. So our answer is positive for so since it's positive, that means this time it's upright. So our answer is consistent. It's positive magnification, so it's upright. And then you have here, it's a virtual image. But the image is larger than the object, so the image is now magnified. Okay? Okay, so next, a diverging lens has a focal length of 14 centimeters. For an object to the left, of the lens at distances of 18 centimeters and 7 centimeters. Determine the image position and then the magnification. Then also identify whether the image is real or virtual and inverted or erect. So take note that it's a diverging lens, therefore the focal length is negative. So let's solve now for the distance of the image. Okay, part A, we are looking for the distance of the image, 1 over di, equals 1 over f, minus 1 over do. So our focal length, it's negative 14, minus the distance of the object is 18. So again, units are consistent, so we can just proceed, no need to convert units. Our 1 over di is equivalent to negative 0 0.1270. So again, please use all the decimal places if you are using calculator. So let's solve for the reciprocal. We now have the distance of the image is negative 0 0.13 centimeters. So that means again, it's on the same side as where the object is located. Therefore, it's a virtual image. Then we can also solve for the magnification M is equivalent to negative DI over DO. So our DI, we have here negative 0 0.13 divided by the distance of the object is 18. So we can now solve. The answer is 0 0.0072. So here the sign is positive 0 0.0072. If it's magnification, there uh, it has no unit because it's 
uh, distance i, or distance of the image, divided by distance of the object, cm divided by cm, so there's no unit, is a positive 0 0.0072. If it's positive, it's... So if it's positive, it's upright or erect, and it's also a virtual image. Okay. So that's for letter A. Okay, letter B, we have here, again, we look for the distance of the image. That's 1 over F minus 1 over DO. So our focal length is negative, that's 1 divided by negative 14 minus 1 over 7. The answer here, 1 over di, 1 over negative 14 minus 1 over 7, it's negative 0 0.214. So getting the reciprocal of that, that will give us the distance of the image is equivalent to negative 4.67 centimeters. So you can see it's negative, so this one is virtual. Okay, next is to solve for the magnification M. So it's just negative di over do. So we have negative negative 4.67. So make sure that you are using the correct signs. Divided by the distance of the object is 7. So our M is 0 0.667. So it's positive, that means it's upright or erect. And indeed, it's a virtual image. Okay? So our analysis is consistent. It's a virtual and it's upright. Okay, last item for the problem solving or for the sample problems. We have a lens forms an image of an object. An object is 16 centimeters from the lens. The image is 12 centimeters from the lens. So this time, the distance of the image is um, given. Again, it's on the same side as the object. So is that positive or negative? Then A, what is the focal length of the lens? B, is it diverging or converging? C, if the object is 8.5 millimeters, take note that's millimeters, so you still have to convert it to centimeters. How tall is the image? Is the image erect? or inverted. Okay, so let's solve. Okay, again, this time, the given is the distance of the image, and it's on the same side, therefore it's negative. Let's look for f. 1 over f equals 1 over di plus 1 over distance of the object. But our distance of the image is negative, so that's negative 12 plus the distance of the object is 16. So 1 over f, that will give you negative 0 0.0208. And getting the reciprocal of that, we will now have a negative 48 centimeters. So the fo focal length is negative, therefore, it's a diverging lens. Or it's a concave lens. Okay? So next thing that we have to solve would be the size of the image. So we can now solve for the size of the image we have. SI over SO equals negative DI over DO. So let's look for size of the image. We now have negative DI SO divided by distance of the object. The distance of the image is negative 12. The size of the object it's 8.5 millimeters, so that is 0 0.85 centimeters. There are 10 millimeters in 1 centimeter. 
and then we have divided by 16, distance of the object. Okay, so our answer is negative, negative 12 times 0 0.85 divided by 16. We have the size of the image, it's 0 0.64. Centimeters. So this one is upright or erect. Therefore, our image is virtual image. Okay. So that's it. So I want you to work on the seat work that found in your module. Okay. So that would be the end of our discussion about lenses, ray diagramming on lenses, and also problem solving on lenses. Okay? Goodbye, everyone.